Hello there, I'm Ryan Chan, CEO and founder of Upkeep. Today we're going to delve into the world of maintenance unit cost. This metric, though not yet standardized by the Society for Maintenance and Reliability Professionals, or SMRP, can give your maintenance and operations teams a comprehensive view of your production costs. We'll be covering how to calculate this cost effectively, the potential pitfalls, and how to use this metric to get the most accurate and meaningful information for your team. Keep watching to get insights with a simplified example and how this can help you prioritize your maintenance programs. Let's talk about maintenance unit cost. This is a snapshot of the total maintenance cost required to manufacture a standard unit of production during a set period of time. Now, the Society for Maintenance and Reliability Professionals, or SMRP, hasn't set any best-in-class targets yet, but this metric can be incredibly helpful when combined with others to prioritize your maintenance programs. So what data do you need to calculate this metric? Well, the most cost-effective way to do this is to have an accurate measurement of both production capacity and maintenance costs. These costs should include labor and MRO costs for reactive, preventive, and predictive maintenance programs. Many businesses find this metric to be an excellent lagging indicator to see how investment in maintenance impacts the reliability of their equipment. Let's break it down with a simplified example. Imagine a facility that had an annual maintenance cost of $2 million. If this facility produced 15 million pounds of product during that same period of time, its maintenance cost per unit of production would equal 13 cents per pound. Goals can then be set for subsequent years to reduce that cost per unit of production through CMMS implementation or improving reliability programs. This metric works best when you apply it to a particular asset set of assets or an entire organization that produces a measurable, consistent unit of production. But like any metric, there are some potential shortfalls you'll want to be aware of. If you choose to use this metric, you'll want to take some precautions so that you obtain accurate, meaningful information. Firstly, shorter measurement intervals must incorporate a weighted component of overall planned downtime to be accurate. Secondly, if you plan to use this metric to compare your facility against the competition, you'll want to be sure you're using gross standard units so that measurement components are comparable. Thirdly, if you have production curtailments that are related to factors outside of maintenance or market demand, this metric will be inaccurate. Fourthly, distributed costs such as infrastructure, building and grounds, and so forth, must be taken into account. Lastly, different products will have unique unit maintenance costs and cannot necessarily be compared directly even if units of measure are the same. So while the maintenance unit cost can provide valuable insights, it's important to be aware of these considerations to ensure you're getting the most accurate and meaningful information for your maintenance and reliability teams. Thank you for watching. We've covered the concept of maintenance unit cost, its calculation, potential pitfalls, and how it can be used effectively by your maintenance and operations teams. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. For more resources and to learn more about our services, visit us at upkeep.com.